Hello and welcome to Life Church Today. Life Church Today wants to make a lasting difference in your life, in our community, and in the world. Our mission is to lead people to become fully devoted followers of Jesus Christ. That's how Life Church Today is able to make a difference in the lives of so many people, and it's the motivating dynamic behind everything that we do. You see, church isn't merely a building, it's the people. So we aim to bring church to you. We meet around the globe online and in physical locations throughout America. No matter how and where you join Life Church today, you will find friendly people who are excited to get to know you as you become part of the Life Church family. And wherever you are in life, you matter to God and you have a purpose to fulfill. Life Church today wants to help you become the person God has created you to be. Every journey, including yours, has a next phase and will help you discover it. It could start with simple things like serving, praying, or writing, finding God's vision for you. You will not have to take the next step by yourself. With a solid community of friends, you can smile, grow, and serve with people who sincerely care about you. Enjoy the sermons, read the devotions, reach out and contact us. We respond to every single person who writes us or find a group to join you on your faith journey. Worship, give, and love. Our community and world. We are excited about serving the world's community and offering God's love to people of all backgrounds, whether online, in person, individually, or in groups. Within our church and around the globe, we are focused on supporting and engaging in relationships that provide assistance and restoration to the hurting world. Our caring leadership team, including lead pastor Mike Robinson, works together to shape the vision and direction of Life Church today. Pastor Robinson, author of 40 books, serves with a team of enthusiastic and educated ministers using their numerous years' experience. They aim to serve you and your whole family. Visit lifechurchtoday.com.
ever fomented the foundations of your firmament. That is, before the stars in your sky ever entered existence. Before the light knew what bright meant. Before the sky had a clue where up went. Before either were ever invented. I am. Before terrestrial perennials terraced your planet's territorial terrain, that is, before the plants in your ground were ever ordained, before roots were ever arranged, before fruit had a taste, before either had a name, I am. Before the ocean had a bowl, before the surf discovered its role, before the grave was made Sheol, before man had a soul, I am. Before Eden was installed, before the garden serpent crawled, before the tree, before the fall, I am. For I am truth before there ever could be false. I am perfection before there ever could be faults. I am by all, in all, through all, all, in all, and I am to be called. I am. Before the curse usurped the ground and drove you away from the divine. Before you felt that separation between who you are and the intention of your design. 
before you tried to abide in sources of death in order to find life, before you combined yourself with any form of pleasure you could find, before you felt so alone, before you felt so dry, before you tried to run away from my side, I am, I am the vine. Before the cherubim ever guarded the garden, before the flaming sword was ever sharpened, before that chasm between God and man was ever widened, before you lost all hope in becoming a citizen of heaven, before all you earned was endless flame, before all you deserved was righteous pain, before you were a sheep hoping not just to be some lion's prey, before you were a lost lamb longing for a pen, longing to escape your fate, I am, I am the gates. Before sustenance turned to gluttony and food became an enemy, before attraction was based on anatomy and sex was removed from matrimony. Before money became morality and our greed grew into the only causality. Before you were empty without me. Before you tried to satisfy your appetite with anything. Before you strived to feel alive by filling your strife with the fleeting vices of your fleshly devices. Before your hunger for relief left pain in your side I am I am the bread of life before you became acquainted with pain and death before you ever tasted loneliness before disease destroyed what you possess before eyes could go blind before ears could go deaf before you lost the one you love to the grave's unyielding cleft I am for before mankind stopped living so that they might just survive, I am the resurrection and the life. Before that sadness that grips your mind led you to darkness and thoughts of suicide. Before that distortion of man hurt you so that you now hurt yourself. Before you knew razors and wrists could create a new hell. Before those wounds turned to scars and those scars became your way of life. I am, I am the light. For before you even knew how to sin, I am where your salvation begins. For before you withdrew from the path of my way, before you willfully and joyously disobeyed, before you betrayed that gift that I gave of the breath in your lungs, that life in your airways, by saying no to my love and yes to your heresy, before you engaged with the enemy, waged in sin with intensity, before you deranged my supremacy and flamed my jealousy, before you chose greed over my adequacy, lies over my accuracy, pride over my advocacy, before you chose your sinful self over me, I am, I am still the good shepherd who lays down his life for his sheep, for before you were a spotted lamb, I am. For I am the way before you could ever run away from my call. I am the truth before you could ever walk away from my law. I am the life before you could ever turn away from my cross at Golgotha's skull. And so I beg you now to withdraw. Withdraw from your sin, for I am your only temptation. Withdraw from yourself, for I am making you a new creation. Withdraw from your pride, for I am ruining your reputation. Withdraw from your self-righteousness, for I am your only mediation. Withdraw from your hopes and dreams, for I am your only expectation. Withdraw from your life, for I am your crucifixion. For before all time, I am all sufficient. Before all time, and designations to my name alone did the cosmos listen for I am Jesus I am the word I am Elohim I am the Lord I am the Christ I am Messiah I am creator I am Jehovah Jireh I'm the Lamb of God I am Emmanuel I'm the begotten son I am the Holy One of Israel I am the 
first fruits. I am the prince of peace. I am the bridegroom. I am the king of kings. I'm the God of Abraham. I'm the God of Jacob. I am the alpha. I am the omega. I'm the holy one worthy of praise. So withdraw to my side. Withdraw and be made mine. Withdraw and with me stay. Withdraw into my way. The mountains shake before you, the demons run and flee. At the mention of the name, King of Majesty, there is no power in hell. chapter 2, verse 38 and 39, hear the infallible, mighty, life-changing word. Then Peter said to them, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is to you and to your children, and to all those who are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call. Blessed be the reading of God's word. Would you have a seat and join me in prayer? Join me in prayer, please. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your love. We thank you for all the good and wonderful things you give us. Your great grace that you bestow upon us, even though we don't deserve it. Amen. We ask you, Lord, that you would open our hearts today, that we would receive what you have for each and every one of us, Lord. That we would understand it and, and contemplate it, ponder it ruminate on it and apply it to our hearts and share it with others. We ask that in Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, take your outlines out and keep them before you. You can also use your devices there online. 
uh, we're going to be talking about our first love and talking about what God is doing in our hearts and what He should be. Jesus spoke to the book of uh, the church of Ephesus in the book of Revelation. And He said, I had a complaint against you. Mm -hmm. Now, the church was doing well in many ways as you read that text in Revelation. But Jesus had a complaint against them. Yes, they had met at 11 a.m. on Sundays. They had a good Wednesday night service. They're helping the poor and visiting prisoners and having a women's ministry, evangelism, and missions. A busy church. A solid-looking church. They talked like a church. They looked like a church. And they acted like a church. They were busy, but they were not burning. Amen? Amen? Tell the person next to you, I start feeling some heat here. Go ahead. <laughs> they were busy but not burning. I know this side over here is a little warm. We're trying to fix that today, though. But they were busy but they were not burning. The fire was out. The passion was lost. Enthusiasm was waning. Excitement for Jesus was gone. So they just went through the motions. The fire wasn't burning. Amen? Amen. Now, see, the devil doesn't care if you're busy. He just doesn't want you to burn for a passion for Jesus. Amen? Amen? See, the one thing that the Lord delights in more than anything is a fiery, zealous love for Jesus. Mm. After all, He's Jesus. Amen? You still with me? Yeah. He's Jesus. There's nothing like Him. So we can be busy looking like a Christian, but we can lose our passion for our wonderful Lord and Savior, Jesus. And so in the book of Revelation, Jesus examines that church in Ephesus, and then He commends them for their service. That the church knows how to get things done. It knows how theology lines up with the Word. They're astute doctrinally, yet the fire was barely smoldering. They took their eyes off Jesus. And here, here it is, right here. When you focus on Jesus, when you focus on Jesus Christ, he touches your heart. Yes, he does. And every time you hear His name, your heart starts racing. Your palms get sweaty. Your spirit is lifted. Somebody say, yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. sir. See, Jesus, your, your spirit is lifted. Your joy abounds because it's Jesus. And that changes everything that He's in your life and is yeah. in your heart. Amen. See, you can't wait for Sunday or Wednesday to worship Jesus and to feel His presence. Amen. Because you love Jesus. You love Him. You do anything for Him because He first loved you. He has your heart. He has your whole heart. Somebody shout glory today. Glory. See, if you lost your fire, if you lost your first love, if you're bored by worship, if you lost your fire, you left your first love, you need to look back to Jesus. Amen. To look to Jesus. On your outline there, it's a command to fix your eyes on Jesus. The author and finisher of your faith. To refresh the fire. To lift up your hands. To shout to the Lord. For when the Spirit hits you, you carry on like Jesus died for you or something. Amen. Yes. Because He did. Amen. Yes. You carry on. You get worked up as if you have a free pass to heaven. Because you do. Amen. Earned by Jesus. By His love. His agonies on the cross. His stripes. He was pierced for our iniquities. We're talking about Jesus. Amen. Jesus, Lord and Savior. Marvelous One. Somebody say, yes, sir. Yes, Jesus sir. we're talking about. See, I, I could have lost all hope. I could have nothing. I could be on my way to hell. But Jesus, you brought me to yourself. Jesus, i got to tell you how much I love you. That you're everything to me. That you did everything for me. Mm. Is there anyone here who knows who knows if it wasn't for Jesus, you'd be on your way to judgment and darkness. Somebody yes. shout hallelujah. Yes. Yes. See, love is only partially emotional. That's a part of it. It can flow from the covenant promises of what real love is. But love is spiritual. It's based on commitment and the covenant. And love spares no expense. Just look at the cross. It spares no expense. What Jesus did for you and I. Remember the woman with the alabaster box? Inside was perfumed oil worth a year's worth of salary in that box. And she came up to Jesus. And Jesus changed everything. She loved Jesus so much. She took that ointment and broke it open. And did not just dab it in her palm and rub it upon Him. But she poured it all out upon Jesus. She poured it all out. And worship and love and praise 
for Jesus. When it's real, you got to pour it out. Amen? Yes, you you got to pour it out. And God has been good to me. i got to pour it out. God has blessed me. i got to pour it out. Jesus loved me and gave Himself for me. i got to pour it out. And there's so many of us here this morning that God has been good to you and you got to pour it out. you got to pour it out. you got to pour out your whole heart to Jesus because He's everything to you. He's the Alpha and the Omega. Somebody say amen. Yeah. Say, I don't want just a little praising. I want to give God my best praise. I want to give God all my heart. I don't want to shout just a little bit, but I want to shout with joy. See, when our football team wins, we shout. But you know what? The Bible says that God wins. That truth wins. And ultimately, God's will will win. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. See, all the football players get when they win is a Super Bowl ring. But in heaven, I get a crown. Amen. I get a crown. I have a crown waiting for me in heaven. A crown that does not fade or diminish. Somebody say, yes, sir. Yes. See, Jesus gives that to you. Yes. Why? So you can throw it at his feet because he's worthy of all yes. praise and yes. glory. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. And Jesus says to the church in Ephesus, remember, remember. And you and I remember how good God has been to you. Remember when you had nothing, how good God has been to you. Remember when things didn't seem to line up, you couldn't go on, but how good God has been to you. Remember when you were down to your last dime, and who made a way when there was no way but God. Somebody say amen. But most of all, here it is. Remember Jesus. Remember Jesus. Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus the Christ. Jesus the Son of God. The Son of Man. Never ever forget Jesus. Always, always remember Jesus. Forget it all, but never ever forget Jesus. Amen. Remember when you were lost and facing judgment. And Jesus came and plucked you out to the world of crime, mm. grime and slime of sin. Mm. And He loved you. Mm. forgave you. And He set His peace upon you. Yes. Receive that even today. That shalom upon you. That's a wellness and a wholeness that comes spiritually from God. That can change everything in your body, soul, and mind. That shalom to receive it today in Jesus' name. That He set His peace upon you. Yes. And as I look to the Holy Spirit, He just blows to my spirit. I get refreshed and forgiven. Holy Spirit comes to empower me to love the Lord and to love others. That's right. In Acts chapter 3 on your outline there, Peter is preaching a sermon by the power of the Holy Spirit. He says this, if you look at verse 22, Men of Israel, hear these words. Notice the centrality of Jesus in this sermon. The first sermon to blast the church off, to launch the church, to advance the church. Notice what Peter says. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested by God to you by, notice this, miracles and wonders and signs, which God did through Him in your midst, as you yourselves know. Now notice this. Peter appeals to hostile witnesses. This, these guys have great weight when determining legal truth. Hostile witnesses. He says, you guys are the ones that did it. And you know these things went down. Mm. Him being delivered by the determined purpose and foreknowledge of God, you have taken by lawless hands, have crucified and put to death, whom God raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be held by it. Mm. There's so much here in this. But Peter says, hear these words. Now remember, the New Testament's written in Greek. And the Greek is, is very powerful, very forceful. What Peter is saying, as you yourselves know, do it now. Wake up and do it now. This is not time to relax. This time to do it now. That's what Peter is saying here. To come to Jesus. Why? Because the determined counsel and foreknowledge of God has allowed these things to occur so that you could be saved. Mm -hmm. That lawless man, that's the word where we get antinomian from, Men without law, they're the ones that put Jesus on the cross. And that's some of the people that Peter is preaching to right now. He said, you did crucify. Notice how out front the cross is, how essential the cross is. You can't find that anywhere else. Jesus died for my sins on the cross. He says, you did slay. That's where we get the word annihilate from. 
They tried to annihilate Jesus. But you know what it says? God raised him up. Yes, he did. See, I serve a living Redeemer. Yes. He's alive. Jesus is alive. They tried to kill him, but he's alive. Yes. And Jesus, it said here, did many miracles. See, as you notice, as we preach here, we preach spiritually and intellectually and emotionally. Why? Because God said to worship him with all our heart, soul, and mind. And I know some of us, when we get intellectually, you kind of want to fade out. But see, that's when you need to be challenged. And those of you who, who don't like to be so emotional, you kind of like to be quiet and you're more shy and reserved. You need that. You need to grow in that area. And all of us need to grow spiritually. Amen. So it's okay. Wherever you feel uncomfortable, that's the Lord trying to push you a little bit, grow you a little bit. Mm -hmm. But Jesus, it says here, did many miracles, signs, and wonders. I heard this week about a four-year-old young man named Tyrell, and he had deadly B-cell lymphoma. Mm -hmm. He said, it's not, nothing's, you know, it's, it's done, you're done, you know. We'll give you some chemo, we'll try it. But as the chemo was going on, he was just getting weaker and weaker. And the poor little four-year-old, you know, they were just uh, trying to give him the best comfort that he could on his way out. But then one of the parents said, you know what, no. I am not going to accept this. If it's God's will, so be it. But right now, I'm going to pray, and I'm going to pray in Jesus' name. Yeah. And they prayed, and they had the church pray. And the churches sent out prayer bulletins around all the churches. And they prayed and prayed and prayed for little Tyrell. And all of a sudden, suddenly he gained strength. Mm -hmm. He's there at home to die. And then all of a sudden, week after week, he's getting stronger and stronger. And by Christmas, he has his full strength. So they bring him back to the hospital. And this is what the doctor said, I quote, this is what the doctor said. He declared, God has healed you. He's healed you. There's no other explanation. Amen. He went on to say, God looked down and worked a miracle. Yes. Amen. 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 In the name of Jesus. Yes. We don't even have a, not a small understanding of the power yeah. of the name of Jesus. Yeah. But employ that name. Trust Jesus and His best. Mm. And Peter says, the determined counsel of God's will. In other words, that God... He's the author of all things. We know that there's a big bang, that somebody started the big bang though, right? Who pulled the trigger? That's what scientists tell us. But God, it says, disposes, but man proposes. Mm -hmm. Man plans, and God has his way, right? The determined counsel of God's will. Notice the word counsel there. I can't have a counsel with my own will. But God can because he's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So that's really interesting right from the beginning. Amen. But man proposes, God disposes. An elderly woman was at a prayer meeting and she, she just blurted out to the whole congregation, Lord, just have your own way in our lives. Have you ever prayed that? Mm -hmm. Have your own way in our lives. Not my way, but your way. That's what she did. In that meeting was a, a gal named Adele Pollard. And she was going through a really tough time because she wanted to go on a missions trip to India and the funds weren't coming in. And so she joined everybody in there and said, Lord, just have your own way in our lives. And then Miss Puller went home, and as she was pondering those words over and over in her life, Lord, just have your way in our lives, she wrote the famous hymn called, Have Thy Own Way, Lord, to even some today. Mm. Often in our lives, discouragement and heartaches and trouble comes, and we don't understand it. As children of God, how are these things happening? And you have to say to God, have your own way. You pray for what you think is best, yes. But you always pray, Lord, have your own way here. God's determination is for knowledge. That God started all of this. Scientists tell us that there was that Big Bang I mentioned earlier. We see it from the background radiation in the 1990s. It was proven. The scientists, when the Big Bang Theory first came out, they didn't like it. Because what they said was it tells us that there was a creator. So a lot of them tried to avoid that. Many of them stuck to their guns until the 1990s that there was no Big Bang. But now they're pretty clear that there was a Big Bang. Something started this whole thing. And see, that leads us to the proof of causality. And it's very, very powerful. It's very, very simple. That God determines all things. That God, His foreknowledge, organizes and designs all things. And here's the proof, though. That all effects have a cause. All effects have a cause. Say that with me. All effects have a cause. See, the universe started by the effect of the Big Bang. God caused the effect of the Big Bang. Nothing else is possible. Consider these two possible options for the Big Bang. Either nothing created the Big Bang and had it explode upon nothing, which is impossible, or something powerful enough to create this whole thing started the universe. Those are your two options. Either nothing created everything or God created everything. 
It's your two options. Now, atheists often reject this proof by uh, framing it in the wrong way. What they say is, well, Christians say or theists say that all things have a cause. So then God has to have a cause. But notice, that's not the way it's supposed to be framed. Thomas Aquinas never framed it that way. It's that all effects have a cause. Not all things. Because God is not an effect. He does not have a cause. So it's not like, who created God? Nobody created God. God has always been. By definition, He's the Alpha and the Omega. So all effects have a cause. And we can see this all the way in Peter's preaching. That he's talking about how God foreknew and predetermined all these things. That God uses secondary causes in all things. And He's in control. Science just keeps telling us that more and more. Mm -hmm. Then Peter goes on to say in verse 25, For David says concerning Jesus, him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he's at the right hand that I may not be shaken. So where is Jesus? After the resurrection, Jesus ascended to heaven. So that's where Jesus is. And then what I want to key on, and then we will end, is that verse we read during um, the reading of the Word, verse 40. It says here, or verse 39, For the promise is to you and your children, and all who are far off, as many as the Lord will call. Mm -hmm. See, notice that where the, the prominence children have in that, that the promise isn't just for you and I, it's for the children. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, where did that come from? <clears throat> that came from Jesus. Mm -hmm. Remember in Luke chapter 18, Jesus is there and he's with a bunch of babies and toddlers. This is Father's Day after all, right? <laughs> yep. So we'll cover the middle of that text next week, Lord willing. But here, I just want to expound briefly on Jesus and children and how the promise is to the children. See, in Luke 18, it's recorded in the other Gospels too, people were bringing babies and youngsters to Jesus. They were bringing them to Jesus. Why? Get this. To touch them and bless them. The parents wanted Jesus just to touch their babies and bless them. Now the word translated from the Greek to bless means to have an intimate touch, to hold, to convey a blessing over. The word means a close, intimate touch. In Matthew's account it says the little children were brought to Jesus for Him to place His hands on them and pray for them. In the story, they were little children, toddlers and tykes and babies. The word translated for children there is a word for a very, very small child, a baby, an infant, or a toddler. And that's who Jesus was touching. So the people were bringing babies to Jesus, tots and toddlers to Jesus. Just imagine this scene. There's Jesus. The Master is there, right? Mm -hmm. The best rabbi in the land. The Son of God is there. And then when the disciples saw it, though, they rebuked them. And if you don't like children, you've got to pray about your heart being changed. You've got to love children. Can you imagine this setting? Countless parents bringing babies and letting their toddlers run up and rush up into the arms of Jesus. And Jesus, with great joy, would scoop them up and pray for them and love them and bless them, even though the disciples didn't want it to happen. So the promise is for the children too. Mm -hmm. Well, the children in the time of Jesus were prized by parents. They weren't prized by the culture, especially the Greek and Roman culture. They were considered unworthy of adult attention, but not with Jesus. Jesus said, suffer or allow, allow the little children to come unto me. Do not hinder them. Jesus called the little children to himself, even though his disciples were trying to stop him. The promises for the children. And now I can imagine the scene. The red-faced disciples have told the parents to control their children. And then Jesus rebukes the rebukers. So little swarms of toddlers run right past the disciples, under their legs, through them, and go into Jesus. Running into Jesus. As if it's Christmas Day and they're going to open presents. Because there's a better present than that. It's Jesus. So little toddlers run right past the disciples and jump into the arms of Jesus. And Jesus usually sits when He teaches. And you can see these little ones snuggle up close to Jesus. And Jesus lays His hands on them and prays for them. And soon all the children and the entire crowd have run up to Jesus. And they're crowding around Him like a divine jungle gym. All laughing and giggling and huddling, waiting for His touch and His prayer. How marvelous! 
How wonderful. How beautiful. Jesus covered in toddlers. Mm -hmm. Imagine Amen. the scene. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Jesus is saying, allow the little children to come unto me. Do not prevent them. For such is the kingdom of God. That's part of the reason the book of Acts is written is to see the advance of the kingdom of God and to see that old men and young men and children can be used by God. Someone amen. say amen. 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 So Jesus put the disciples in their place and Jesus tells them, if you don't receive them, you don't receive me. The disciples are saying, Jesus, you don't have time for the children. Take them to McDonald's or something where there's a playground there. But Jesus was livid. He was not going to stand for this. These are kids and toddlers and little tots. And Jesus is saying, oh, do I love them. They're mine. Bring them all here. Come, little ones. Come, I love you. For Jesus loved the little children. And the little children loved Jesus. And Jesus loved that. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Amen? That's our safe. Mm. Jesus loves children. He makes them a top priority. And the most important blessing Jesus gave them, the most marvelous, wonderful blessing these tots and toddlers received was Jesus Himself. Amen. The toddlers and the babies and the little tights. Jesus blessed them with Himself. Only Jesus can bless them with a godly love and eternal life and Himself and His heart. All that He is, He touched them and blessed them. Here in this scene, fathers and mothers and perhaps older children are bringing the young children. Many of them were babies. Proud parents handing their precious bundles of joy into the arms of Jesus. Can you see the tots rushing and jumping in the arms of Jesus? Snuggling up to His chest and He places His hand upon their warm little heads and He blesses them with love and mercy. You see, Jesus loves the little children. They all scrambled past the disciples and climbed into Jesus' arms, laughing and giggling and feeling the love at a level that's beyond words. Love that comes straight from Jesus. For Jesus said, come to me and allow all the children, all the babies to come unto me. And so this gives us a great lesson. When you're talking to your relatives, your co-workers, your neighbors, especially your children and your grandchildren, and you want to talk to them about Christianity or demonstrate your Christianity, don't boast about yourself. Don't make it about yourself. There's a place for a testimony. We all know that. But they have to know that your Christianity starts and ends with Jesus. Amen. That Jesus is everything to you. That mommy or daddy, I'm flawed. I have my foibles. I make mistakes. I don't always do what I should do. And that's why I need Jesus. See, son or daughter, it's always about Jesus. It's not about my performance. And my neighbor, and my friends, my co-workers, my relatives. It's not about me. It's about Jesus. See, the things you see in me that you think I'm a hypocrite over is why Jesus died for me and why I need Him and why you need Him also. So we have to come to Him like little children because it's always, always about Jesus. With this and I'm done. The minister was coming in and he announced that he's going to preach on the love of God. That's all he's going to preach on the love of God. And so he comes into the building to preach his sermon. And everybody knew he was going to preach on the love of God. So he comes in there and he turns the lights off. And then lights a candle. And he goes forward. He says, I'm going to preach on the love of God. And he takes his candle up to the, the crucifixion. And he illumines the nail-scarred hands of Jesus. And he says nothing. Then he takes a candle up to the thorn pressed crown on Jesus' head and lights it up with the candle. And he says nothing. Then he takes the candle to the side where Jesus had the spear thrust through him and lights that with the candle and says nothing. Then he takes it to the feet of Jesus with the nail scars and lights that part of the crucifixion and says nothing. And he blows out the candle and he walks out of the service. And that was a sermon huh. on uh, the love of God. Amen. If you ever, 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 ever doubt that God loves you, 
Just look at the cross. Yes. Don't look to yourself. Don't do it. Look to the cross. Look where perfect love was manifested and died for you mm -hmm. in Jesus. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Mm -hmm. If you would bow your heads and close your eyes and join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that you love us, you love the children, that the children are a promise for you, Lord, that all the people in our lives, that we should not be those who fake it, who try to make ourselves look so religious and so right, but that we would always tell people how much we need you, that we fail at times, we mess up at times, we don't always say or do the right things, but you, Jesus, always, always forgive us and always love us. Father, help us extend that love into our marriages, into our families, our homes, our neighborhoods, and our town, and the world, Lord. That you would use us, Lord, to extend the love of God that came and beamed forth through that cross and the resurrection of Jesus. If anyone here hasn't walked with Jesus for a while, maybe you're backslidden, maybe you've never made a commitment to Jesus, this is your opportunity. I would ask everybody to have their heads bowed and their eyes closed. And if you are that person and you want to have a place in heaven, if you want to have that love of Jesus, all you have to say is this prayer and, and mean it with sincerity. God will honor it. You just say, just follow me in this prayer. Heavenly Father, I believe. I believe you died for me. I believe that Jesus is a son of God that he died on the cross and rose again on the third day. I give Jesus my heart and my life. Fill me with your love and with your spirit. That may follow you all the days of my life. I give you all that I am. And everyone said, Amen. 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 All right, let us take the opportunity. Thanks for joining us at Life Church today. It's our joy to play a role in all God is doing in and through your life. We would love to continue with you on that journey. If you have any questions or prayer requests, visit lifechurchtoday.com or email us. We offer free counseling and a free Bible school because we train numerous people into ministry. Use your talents and answer God's call. God wants to do so much for you and through you. If you would like to give, click the donation button on the site. Pastor Robinson's 40 books are on Amazon.